Welcome back to Structures Unchained, your weekly deep dive into the world's most ambitious megaprojects. This week, we're focusing on Boston, a city that's reinventing itself before our eyes. Have you ever wondered how a historic city transforms into a futuristic hub without losing its soul? How do you build a skyscraper atop a train station, straighten a freeway, revive a racetrack, and reconnect coastal communities? all at once. Let's explore four bold projects reshaping the hub and discover what they mean for residents, commuters, and the city's future. Step off a train at South Station, look up, and you don't just see sky, you see a tower. After decades of stop-start attempts, the South Station Tower opened on September 25, 2025. It's not just tall, it's useful. Think offices, homes, a hotel, retail, and an 11-floor sky park. Yes, with a pool. Stacked right above the region's busiest transit node. Why here? Because space over a super hub works harder than space anywhere else. The price tag, about $1.5 billion, isn't vanity. It's leverage. This is transit-oriented development turned up to 11. The project boosts the bus terminal's capacity by roughly 50%, easing the crunch where regional buses meet subways, commuter rail, and Amtrak. Add rooms for convention traffic, daytime office energy, a residential pulse at night, and ground floor retail that keeps the concourse lively. You're not just passing through a station anymore. You're entering a neighborhood. It wasn't easy. Building over live tracks means threading steel and columns around schedules that can't miss a beat. But doing the hard thing unlocks a valuable precedent. Stations can be places, not just portals. That's the bigger story here. The tower signals confidence in the center of the network, and a model other cities can copy. The test over the next year is simple. Does it feel public? Do commuters feel welcome to sit, shop, meet, and move without friction? If the answer is yes, Boston hasn't just added a skyscraper. It's upgraded its front door. Now shift to the Mass Pike in Alston, the curve you know too well. For years, it's been a bottleneck. Ramps, viaducts, rail yards, and the river all crowding the same space. The Alston I-90 multimodal project aims to straighten and simplify that 1.5-mile stretch, unlock land, and cap sections with parks so the neighborhood can finally touch the Charles again. It also proposes a brand new West Station, a commuter rail hub that would connect Alston, Brighton, and beyond to Cambridge and downtown without the car shuffle. 2025 moved the ball on environmental filings and design. It also delivered a plot twist, a large federal Reconnecting Communities grant was largely rescinded, leaving about $8 million. Instead of folding, the state reran the numbers and kept pushing, because the payoff is structural. A straighter highway is cleaner to operate and less visually dominant. Parks over the roadway would stitch back the urban fabric, and West Station could transform Alston from pass-through to destination changing how students, workers, and families move across the river. Yes, the project is complex. Interchanges, rail relocation, flood and stormwater planning, and a cost that could land near $2 billion. But the outsized upside is clear. Straighten the pike, build the station, cap the gaps, and you don't just fix traffic, you grow a neighborhood. The near-term focal point is the October 16, 2025 Task Force session. If design and funding guardrails firm up, early work could start around 2026. The curve has defined Alston for half a century. The next decade could define something else, access. East Boston and Revere are minting a new district where thoroughbreds once thundered. Suffolk Downs spans 161 acres, more than twice Back Bay. And it's not a single building, it's a city-scale plan. Over time, it's set to deliver about 10,000 homes, 5 million square feet of commercial space, and 40 acres of parks and open space. Think parks, plazas,
bikeways and neighborhood retail connected to the Blue Line. The goal isn't a bedroom community, it's a complete neighborhood. This is already real. Phase 1, Amaya, opened in June 2024, and by April 2025 was 93% leased. Big signal that the market is ready for housing with transit at the door. The near-term Cherry on Top is a one-acre pond park planned to open in spring 2026, a visible anchor for the green network. Long-term, the site scale can support schools, a library, and everyday stores that make car light living actually work. What makes Suffolk Downs different from Boston's last boom district? Intentional mix and inclusion. Thousands of units are slated across incomes. The plan emphasizes open space, transit, and a street grid that's walkable from day one. It also sits in flight path country, so the team is designing with noise and height in mind. On jobs, the numbers are equally bold. Tens of thousands of construction and permanent roles over the build-out, and significant new annual tax revenue once the district fills in. Will there be hard questions? Absolutely. Two municipalities, airport adjacency, and the MBTA's capacity constraints all demand careful coordination. But as buildings come online and parks open, the promise is getting tangible. A dense, green, transit-first neighborhood on land that sat idle for years. If the seaport showed how fast Boston could grow, Suffolk Downs aims to show how well it can grow. For New Bedford and Fall River, March 24, 2025, wasn't just another date on the calendar. It was a reunion. That's when South Coast Rail Phase 1 launched, restoring passenger service after 65 years and reconnecting the South Coast to Boston with a predictable timetable. Under the hood, about 37 miles of track work, six stations, and two layover facilities, all built for a service that finally puts the South Coast on the same map as Boston's commuter rail. What does that mean in real life? Commutes you can plan. Students reaching campuses without a car. Nurses making early shifts reliably. Families saying yes to jobs they once had to decline because the drive was a gamble. And it's not just Boston-bound benefits. Expect the flow to reverse, too. Weekend trips to the South Coast's waterfronts, restaurants, and cultural sites, powered by rail instead of traffic. Phase 1 uses diesel locomotives today, but Phase 2, an electrified alignment via Stoughton, with faster trips and more frequent service, sits in planning. Funding will take work, but momentum matters, and Phase 1 delivers it. The more people ride, the stronger the case to go electric, lower emissions, quicker acceleration, quieter trains, and a system that scales. This project took decades of advocacy, revisions, and budget battles. Its payoff is measured in minutes saved and options gained. For the South Coast, this isn't hype. It's a train you can catch tonight. For Boston, it's proof that reconnecting the region multiplies everything you do at the core. Boston's play is simple. Strengthen the core, reconnect the region. Build up where people already move. Link out to those who've been left off the map. Result? Hub plus reach equals network. A city that moves faster, feels closer, works better. Which shift hits you first? Smoother transfers, greener streets, a new address, or a reliable ride. If you want Part B, the Alston Pike Plan and Suffolk Downs build-out, subscribe and stick with us. The next chapter is already on the calendar.